Hey guys, welcome to part two of the bench work build. So today we're just going to talk about how do I finish off the bench work now that you saw the previous video where I did the support structure with the knee and uh, system. So what we're going to do today is we're just going to review what I've done so far and then talk about how we're going to finish out the, uh, the actual bench work itself. So uh, let me show you how I uh, assembled this top, what I used, my methods, and then what else I'm going to do. And then uh, that will be it for the benchmark, uh, bench work once we get uh, finished with this video. So let's get to it. All right, so let's talk about the tabletop. So uh, when you get your me and bench work, they're going to give you these little fasteners that you can use to attach a tabletop to the substructure. They're like basically corner braces and you just put a screw in uh, one of the legs or cross uh, members or and then the uh, table underneath the tabletop. That's you know the system that they recommend if you want to make your layout sort of easily dis uh, to easily disassemble your layout in the future. Um, we're not going to do that um, because first of all, we're you know if we did have to disassemble this, we'd probably be gone. We're not going to move it around anywhere. So, and we have two requirements that we needed to meet uh, for our particular tabletop because of the design I did. So we had to use something different. So what I'm using, and you guys can use any materials you want to depending on your layout and its design. But as you see in my design right here, uh, it spans right from the edge over here all the way over to the wall and then all the way over to the window. So I only have two sides I can work from when I'm building my layout. And so because of that, I have to be able to get on top of the tabletop to work, which is not a problem. Uh, you, the, the step stool is the perfect height to get right up on the tabletop. I've been on it uh, multiple times already, um, so it's not a big deal. But I need the tabletop, one, to be able to support me so it doesn't sag uh, any place when I'm stepping on it. And then two, I also designed these cantilevered ends on the two ends that you walk around. So um, you can see right here, I have this overhang happening here and then down the whole length here. So why did I do that? Well, I did that for two reasons. So on the front here, basically, we're going to put uh, Glenn Snyder shelves going down this front panel. And that's why I needed the overhang so that they would be recessed and then people wouldn't be banging into them when they're walking by the, the layout. On this side, I wanted to be able to put stools and I wanted to be able to have people put their knees underneath the tabletop, so I needed an overhang here. But I didn't want to put supports, so I didn't want to put all kinds of supports underneath here to do that. So the way I accomplished this is I used two uh, layers of three quarter inch cabinet grade plywood. So this plywood is like super high quality. It has a completely smooth surface. It's completely flat. There's no knots in it or anything like that. And, uh, you know, it's basically got um, six uh, or seven layers that are sandwiched together, right? So super uh, stable uh, plywood, super strong. And I'm putting two together and then screwing them together with exterior construction screws. And this makes basically a one and a half inch piece of solid wood. And there's no way this will ever sag, warp, bend, or anything. I actually was hanging off the edge of this with my feet off the ground, and it doesn't budge. So I'm doing this again because I don't want to have any supports underneath here. I just want it to overhang. And this is a good, uh, this has got to be a good uh, six inches or eight inches. Uh, let me get the tape measure here real quick, but it's a pretty good overhang. It's not just one or two inches. So this one right here is seven on this side, and this side is seven too. So they're both seven inch overhangs, so pretty significant overhangs, right? But we don't want it to sag or do anything. So how did I do this? Well, first of all, I'm up on the second floor here. And I live in an older house where the at the top of the stairway you have to make a 90 degree turn to go down the hallway and it's a tight hallway. So getting a four by eight sheet of three quarter inch plywood up on the second floor without damaging the floors, the woodwork and the walls was probably going to be next to impossible. So I decided to do it a different way. So I went along the structure of the bench work underneath here. So as you can see right here in this section where I'm at here, there's a four foot I-beam right here. So what I did is I took 
a 4x8 sheet and I cut it in half right down the center because that is going to ride along this I-beam that goes all the way from end to end there. So no seam is unsupported in my system. They're all supported by an I-beam or a leg, one of the two. And so what I did is because this was a four foot section right here, I put the two uh, pieces seam down the middle. And then on the end here, I just cut a piece of whatever the remaining length was to the window. And I did the same thing on this other side, right? So basically I ended up with four pieces that were easier to get upstairs and without damaging anything in the house. And then I attached them to both the leg system, if there was a leg there. And if there was no leg there, then it's actually attached to the I-beam cross members, wherever they are. Okay. Now on the bottom pieces here, I actually split right there in the back. That cross member is actually supporting a seam right there. So on this side, because this wood, it was much thick, uh, wider than two feet. I forget what it was. It was uh, closer to three or something. And again, to make it easier to get upstairs, what I did is I went about two-thirds of the way out to an I-beam that was going across this direction this way and I cut a, that piece and then I cut a second piece at the end. So basically in the middle here there's two pieces that go end to end because they were only two feet wide but for the wider ones here I cut them into two pieces. So the first layer basically has uh, six pieces and they're all attached to either the legs or the I-beams. And what I used to that was this. I used these um, one and a quarter uh, number eight uh, exterior construction screws. And the reason I use these is because one, they have a star bit that goes with it that uh, drives it in without slippings instead of a Phillips. And two, they have this really special tip on them right here. I don't know if you can see that, if the camera focuses, but that tip basically cuts right into the wood uh, and it doesn't split the wood. That's the difference when it drives in. So when I was driving through all the I-beams and the uh, legs here, it, wouldn't, it doesn't split the wood. So, and one and a quarter inch is perfect because uh, when you put it here, it goes basically right below the surface and then both layers, that goes into the I-beam. This one goes from the top layer to the second, the bottom layer. And then what I did is when I did the top layer, I staggered all the seams. So you can see right here, if it focus, 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 focus. Okay, I've got a seam right here on the top, but there's no seam on the bottom, right? But then if I move over here, you can see there's the bottom seam, but there's nothing on the, on the top. And so when I crossed over those seams, I have two construction screws on each side to basically pull that all together and sandwich it. So what, what is the end result? Basically uh, an incredibly strong tabletop that acts like a solid piece of one and a half inch wood. So, um, and so it's perfect because it gives me everything I need as far as strength goes. I can walk on it, no problem. It doesn't flex at all. And I can have these nice overhangs um, without any issue. And actually, remember, I told you in my previous video, I, I uh, sized my bench works much, much smaller than the tabletop. So even on the other end against the wall and on this side over here, you can see there's overhang here also, probably the same seven, seven to eight inch overhang. I think in the back, it's only uh, like three inches or something like that. It's pretty close, but, um, that's what I ended up with to um, make sure that none of these overhangs were gonna sag or warp or do anything like that. And I screwed everything together and you can see, you can sort of see where the screws are going along the, uh, even though this is a solid piece on top here, they're going along the seam right below it. That would be the, two, the seam on the two pieces that are joined together on the first layer. So, and that's it, that's all I did. One other thing you want, want to do also is, on the corner here, so this was originally like this, sticking out, right? And so that's a really dangerous thing to have on a corner uh, when you, people are trying to go around the corner, right? You're gonna stab yourself with this point all the time. So all I did is I measured in and then cut a 45 right here. And now I have a nice 
uh, corner going around here where you're not going to ever bang into it. So if you're doing corners, guys, you should always either 45 them or round them off. The reason I do the 45s is uh, because I like to trim out my layout. I like it to look really nice, almost like um, finished woodwork, cabinet work, uh, and not leave uh, just rough edges like this, seeing the edge of the plywood and stuff. So it's much easier when I'm using my uh, trim boards like this right here, and I'm going to trim this out, to do 45s around corners. Uh, otherwise, you have to use some kind of a thin, uh, thin wood that you can bend around a corner. And uh, it's much easier just to do the 45s. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so what's next then? Now I got the tabletop on. So exactly what I just said. We're going to trim this out. So this whole edge going all the way down and everything is all going to be trimmed out. Um, I'm going to trim out this corner post right here so you don't see this seam here either, just like I did on my O-gauge layout in the basement. And then on the front here is where, sorry, I'm getting this tripod out of the way here. On the front of the uh, layout here as you walk into the room, again, I'm gonna have this big space right here, which are gonna have uh, Glenn Snyder shelves attached to them so I can store some trains on the front here. But again, they're gonna be recessed. But what I'm gonna do is, when I put my trim here on the top here, it's gonna hang below and Underneath, right behind it, I'm going to put an LED strip going from end to end right here. And that's going to light the whole uh, display of O-gauge, I mean, excuse me, standard gauge trains uh, going down the front of the layout. And then I got this super cool porcelain sign I found. It's a Lionel porcelain sign that fits this era. And it's going to go... Sort of right here. It's only like a three inch sign, so it'll just hang down a little bit, but it's gonna look so cool when you're walking in the room and you're gonna see this little sign hanging there. So I'm pretty excited about that too. So today I am going to finish out all the trim work and trim out the, um, the bench work. And then we have one other thing we need to accomplish before uh, we can say bench work is finished. And that is back in this corner, we have to extend this out right here all the way over to the wall and all the way back and it's going to be level with this so it's just going to continue across here and we're going to create a um, a power station uh, sort of unit right here so it'll, it'll go down we'll have maybe one or two shelves in in the um, bottom of it but basically this is where the transformer is going to be uh, housed and all the things like the uh, DCS module and the command base and stuff like that. And we'll talk about all that. There won't be too many controls with this layout because uh, it's pretty much just gonna be two uh, main lines and then the uh, switches and then uh, maybe a couple switches for accessories and stuff, but very small stuff. So it should fit all in this area right here, no problem. So that's the other thing we're gonna build out today and get that finished. And by the end of today, all the woodworking itself should be finished. And then the last thing I have to do to finish out the bench work and then is just stain and polyurethane all the uh, trim work and the front here just like I did in the basement. And that will be it. Bench work finished and we'd be ready for tracks. So, um, so let me uh, uh, get some of this stuff built here and then we'll come back and we'll show you sort of the final um, bench work build. And then uh, we'll come back after that and we'll show you after it's all stained and uh, polyurethaned what it kind of looks like and then we'll be finished. Okay guys, so here it is. The uh, finished uh, top and all the um, uh, trim. There's the front here. And then I chopped off this corner here. So you can go around the corner easy without hitting the uh, bench work. And there's all trimmed out and back here I built my little uh, station so this is uh, where I'm gonna put my transformer and uh, you know my controls and I have storage there and stuff like that but I had some extra wood left over from the uh, fire that I had so um, I use that here and I just have to stain the rest of the trim and everything to match all that and we're good to go so that's the next step I will be staining and then uh, polyurethane all this trim here and the front and then we'll be ready to uh, put the LED lighting under the edge here and we'll put the uh, Glenn Snyder 
shelves when they arrive down here on the front. And that will be it for the bench work. We're all set. So, so just, uh, you know, when you're building your bench work, just make sure you're leaving uh, space for everything. So you can see back here on the top here, I left a space behind the uh, uh, panel here so I can run cords and stuff like that. So, you know, just make sure you plan all that stuff out when you're doing it. But yeah, I think three little shelves would be plenty for the transformer and like the uh, TIU and legacy, um, not, excuse me, legacy, uh, the TMCC base and stuff like that. So, which is all I need up here for the standard gauge layout. And that's pretty much it. So I will come back once I have this all stained in polyurethane and we'll see a final uh, view of it before we uh, start the next phase. All right guys, so here it is. This is the finished bench work. So um, let's take a little tour of the uh, final work. So as you can see from the front here, uh, I finished all the trim work. So uh, there's a trim piece that runs around the entire perimeter of the layout. Um, and I use this actually for two purposes. If you look on the inside here, this will hold any uh, material from falling over the edge also. So. Plus it trims out the edge of the uh, layout really nice, so that's one thing I really like. You can see over here, uh, I talked about this earlier, where I was cutting the corner off so we don't have a sharp edge going around the corner. And again, just trim that out on this side. So same thing, everything's been stained in polyurethane, so um, we're all set to go. And I trimmed out the, uh, the end here on the end of the front. Now this portion right here, this whole front right here is going to be um, have Glenn Snyder shelves uh, for storage, which is one of the reasons why I originally made this uh, cantilevered edge here so I'd have this indent and have all this space for the trains. Remember, standard gauge trains are huge, so I needed the depth. And then what I did is underneath here, I have a light strip. This is a Phillips Hue light strip. It, it integrates with the rest of my house, so um, when you walk into this room, basically the lights always come on and off by themselves and this is now linked to that so that when you come into the room, uh, not only do the overhead lights go on, but then this uh, display light will go on to display all the trains that are going to be in the front here. So that's pretty cool. And then I have this cool sign in the front here. This, was, this is actually a sign made by a, a company called Andy Rooney. They don't make these anymore. This was years ago, but they... Uh, they do this process from the uh, early turn of the century where they take steel and then they, you know, put porcelain on the front of it to make these signs, just like they used to. Um, and so they did a whole series of Lionel stuff way back when, and this is one of them. And this is exactly the sort of the theme I'm trying to get after in this room, which is, an, you know, basically after the turn of the century kind of feel. And so it has that kind of font and everything, you know, you can see there's like a 381 or something, you know, pictured here, engine, and talks about multi-volt transformers, which of course were Lionel's first, electric transformers and things like that. So anyway, I mounted it right on the front here as you walk into the room. I thought it was kind of cool. And with the trains behind it, you know, on this uh, wall here in the front of the layout, I think it'll look pretty cool when it's all said and done. So. I just mounted that on there. There's the top of the layout, all ready to go for some track work. And then the other thing I did is I talked about this earlier, which is create this uh, sort of power stations, like a bookshelf or bookcase or whatever you want to call it here. And I basically used some scrap wood I had. Um, I had some trim work, uh, left over from the uh, fire and stuff like that. So. I just made this three shelf uh, platform and I just continued it on right here from, you know, the platform. It's the same level, it goes right across here. I put this, uh, uh, sort of these uh, felt shelf liners here. They're like these hard, uh, stiff um, shelf liners I used from my kitchen renovation, I had some extras. So I just put those on the shelf because they're nice and soft and you can throw remotes and stuff like that in there. So I've got three shelves on the front here and you can see I've got my Z4000 on the top here, so pretty much all ready to go there. And then underneath the layout, I've already wired up the main power feeds. So these two switches right here basically uh, turn on, on and off the power for the entire layout. So I just turn those off when I leave the room. I did the same thing downstairs in my old gauge layout. So just an extra safety measure to make sure you don't leave a transformer on or something like that um, accidentally. Uh, I don't need another fire, so um, 
got that all set, ready to go. So now I'm ready to plug in anything I need to. I have uh, 12 outlets underneath here I can plug into for whatever I need, like the TIU or Legacy Base or whatever I'm working on. So, And then the other thing I did underneath the layout, you can see right here, is I added LED lighting around the entire perimeter right here. So this is one of the mistakes I made downstairs on my old gauge layout, which is I didn't have any lighting underneath and I always had to drag a portable light underneath every time I was working on it wiring and stuff so I got these little things from Govi they come with these two little switch controls they're 16 feet of LEDs I think they were like 15 bucks or something like that really cheap um, they got really good reviews and I just put them around the perimeter and I just pointed them towards the uh, outwards horizontally so that they flood the whole area with light and um, you know you don't want to put them up on the top of the layout pointing down because then when you're looking up trying to uh, fish wires through holes and stuff they're going to blind you right so you want to put them around the perimeter sort of facing in and that's it so that they're all done and I can turn them off and on with these simple switches right here and they'll go on and off and really nice because it really uh, lights up the entire bottom here so I can uh, don't have to worry about dragging in portable lights and stuff like that. Uh, the other thing I did is I start posting up some of my artwork on the walls here. So I've got these cool, uh, uh, this was actually in the basement for my Ogage layout, but I pulled it up here because it fits in the theme of this room better. So that's a canvas print that Lionel had produced, I don't know how many years ago um, when I picked it up. Um, it was one of those decor items that they were selling at the time in one of their catalogs. But um, that's the catalog cover from the 1926 Lionel catalog. So, um, you know, obviously those are standard gauge trains and everything, pretty famous catalog cover. And then uh, there's one right next to it here. These are tin signs. So, just other uh, catalog covers from the 20s. There's one over here also I put on this side. So that's 24 right there, 1924. The one on the other side that uh, I was just showing you is 1929, uh, I think that one is. So those are just like tin signs. Really cool. And then the other thing I got was uh, these. Again, this is uh, one of those metal signs, porcelain. Um, this is American Flyer uh, service station sign, authorized service station. So I, I actually just uh, found this recently at uh, a local hobby store. I guess somebody brought it in to sell it. and. Uh, it was in the cabinet and I'm like, this is cool, perfect. I believe this is also one of the ones that the Andy Rooney company made um, during that time they were producing these signs. And then over here, I've got some uh, other cool items. I've got another, this is definitely another Andy Rooney sign. It's a porcelain uh, metal one. And then right below it, I have, uh, this one doesn't kind of fit into my theme here, but uh, it's just a cool piece because it's a Lionel uh, dealer clock. Um, so I think it's from the 70s or, you know, 80s or whatever. Let me uh, turn it on here. So yeah, really cool clock. Lights up and it, it works uh, fine. I actually took it all apart and uh, cleaned everything and um, basically uh, made sure all the wires were okay and everything. And so yeah, it's a cool clock. Uh, I think it's again from the uh, late 70s, early 80s or something like that based on the, the font style of the Lionel uh, logo and everything. But yeah, pretty cool. And then the last piece I have is another uh, porcelain sign here right above the closet. And this one is another one that's a Lionel Trains Authorized Service Center sign. So, um, yeah, just I love all this uh, stuff you can put on the walls for your train room. Uh, so, really cool. Hey guys, well that'll be it for the bench work build. So we finished. Uh, we hope to get this done by January 1st. And guess what? Today's January 1st. We made it. Welcome to 2022. So now that uh, we've got our bench work done, we're ready to move on to the next part of the series, which is gonna be the track work, the track plan, and all that kind of cool and fun stuff. That's where the fun really begins, right? The bench work's kind of boring and something you gotta get out of the way. But once the bench work's ready to go and you can actually start laying track, that's when the fun begins. So stay tuned for the upcoming videos on that. Um, I just wanna thank everybody for uh, watching my videos, everybody that subscribed and watched my videos in 2021. Hopefully 2022 will be a much better year, but I gotta tell you this hobby is one of the best hobbies to be in uh, When there's things going on in the world and you're stuck at home, so 
Um, I hope everybody got a chance to uh, make some new friends this year in the hobby and uh, maybe go see some real trains, work on some layouts, go run some trains. But um, I think that's really what it's all about. And I hope to continue all this stuff in 2022. So I think for my videos now for 2022, I'm just going to wish everybody uh, peace. And I'll see you guys next time.